I recently read The Great Mental Models by Shane Parrish. Author Shane Parrish says, In life and business, the person with the fewest blind spots wins. After reading The Great Mental Models, I've started considering what I call the three what-ifs while making big decisions and solving hard problems. The IFS and what-ifs are three thinking methods, better known as mental models, that help reveal blind spots and uncover creative solutions to problems. The I in what-ifs stands for inversion. When you're having trouble solving a problem, try solving the opposite problem first. Instead of asking, how can I make a really good video? Ask, how can I make a really bad video? And instead of asking, how can I be more productive today? Ask, how can I be as unproductive as possible today? Once you've generated a list of ideas, invert them. When I consider how to make a really bad video, I think of using PowerPoint slides with no images or examples. I think of using a monotone voice that will put my audience to sleep. And I think of making the video much longer than it needs to be. When I invert those ideas, I think of making a video with minimal text and plenty of colorful examples. I think of using lots of vocal variety and making the video as short as possible. When I wonder how I can be as unproductive as possible today, I think of sleeping till noon, eating a big stack of pancakes for breakfast that leaves me feeling lethargic, and responding to emails all day. By inverting those ideas, I can plan a highly productive day. That is, I'll wake up at 5 a.m., fast till noon so I can focus better, and only check my email after completing my most important task for the day. Solving opposite problems or deliberately coming up with bad ideas is fun, and it typically gets your creative juices going. Plus, bad ideas are surprisingly valuable once you invert them. The next time you feel pressured to come up with a brilliant solution, use the mental model of inversion. As Shane Parrish says, avoiding stupidity is easier than seeking brilliance. The F in what ifs stands for first principles thinking. Elon Musk had a problem. He wanted to go to Mars, but acquiring a rocket to get to Mars was simply too expensive. So Musk asked himself, what is a rocket made of? Well, aerospace grade aluminum alloys, plus some titanium, copper, and carbon fiber. Then he wondered, what is the value of those materials on the commodity market? After some research, Musk discovered that the materials made up roughly 2% of a typical rocket price. After a simple examination of the underlying components, Musk saw an opportunity to create a better solution to his rocket to Mars problem. Years later, SpaceX was born. Most people assume existing solutions exist for a good reason and never question them. First principle thinkers don't take existing solutions at face value. They drill down to understand why a solution works. A few decades ago, a group of food researchers liked the taste of meat, but didn't like the idea of harming animals to get their meat. After some first principles thinking, they realized that the fundamental components of great tasting meat was simply a collection of amino acids and sugars, no animal necessary. This discovery led to the creation of the fake meat industry. Now, it would be exhausting to solve every problem with first principles thinking. It's typically okay to go with an existing solution to most problems, but when faced with a highly consequential decision or problem, like what career to choose or what business to start, don't simply do what other people are doing. Instead, put your first principles cap on and start drilling down to understand the fundamental components of existing solutions. For example, if you're looking to make a career change, don't assume that you'll like a career just because your friend does. The components of a career that make your friend happy might make you miserable. Do some first principles thinking by understanding your friend's day-to-day -day experience at work to see the fundamental components of his career. Then identify core components of rewarding work you've done in the past and search for core components of work satisfaction in books like So Good They Can't Ignore You or Drive. A link to both those book summaries in the description below. If the career you're examining looks like a good fit, great. If not, look elsewhere or use the first principles you discovered to create a new career. The next time you're faced with a highly consequential decision or problem, use first principles thinking to examine existing solutions, test assumptions, and understand the fundamental components that make a solution work. Then either go with that solution or use those first principles to come up with a better solution. The S in what ifs stands for second order thinking. After World War I, the British and French forced Germany to disarm, 
give up territory, and pay reparations that would be worth roughly $500 billion today. The British and French got what they wanted, a weak Germany that could not wage war again, or so they thought. The British, French, and other Allied powers failed to consider the second-order effect of their actions, namely fueling the rise of fascism in Germany that would lead to far more destruction in World War II. Second-order thinking gets you to think beyond the outcome you're going for and consider the reaction to that outcome. It's important to incorporate second-order thinking in your decisions to avoid disastrous unintended consequences that come from second-order effects. If you're a CEO of a company and you demand that everyone comes back to your office after a year from working at home thanks to COVID, you might get what you want, namely improving the culture with everyone back together. But your actions might have the second order effect of getting people to realize how much they hate commuting to work and miss the convenience of working from home. Those people might lead the company, which could ultimately destroy the culture. Before implementing any solution or making any important decision, do some second order thinking by taking a minute to simulate what the reaction to your solution or decision might lead to. In the end, if you're struggling with a problem or need to make an important decision, consider the three what-ifs. Inversion, solve the opposite problem, or consider how you'd make a terrible decision. Then invert your ideas and see what valuable insights you discover. First principles thinking, examine the foundational components of existing solutions and test them. Adopt a solution with sound fundamentals or use the first principles you uncovered to develop a better solution. In second order thinking, simulate reactions to your solution or decision to prevent your solution or decision from backfiring. That was the core message that I gathered from The Great Mental Models by Shane Parrish. This is a quick and fascinating read with many helpful thinking tools. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.